Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today, good sir? I am doing just fine. Uh, we have uh, another week of Ohio State football coming. Guys, it's November. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Don't be mad if Ohio State only has 28 points. It's only if it's like only like 28 nothing at halftime. It just it just enjoy it. It's Ohio State football. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you play. Just enjoy it. It's it's only it's only a few weeks out of the year here. So enjoy it. But it is, Jared, it is time for Zach says he's uh, gonna be in attendance. Awesome. Awesome. It is that time. It is our Know Your Enemy episode. And today, Jared, this weekend, we get to talk about everyone's favorite team. Austin knows what's up here. The Indiana. Hoosiers. Kyle, we're, we're going we're gonna to do it again. I'm going to need you to turn your noise gate off and, and try it again. I feel like it's a yearly. We only get really get to do it. All right. Once a right, year right. properly. I got it. Okay. I got it. You ready? The Indiana Hoosiers. All right. Now you can turn that noise gate back on. There we go. <laughs> All right. Indiana. Uh, not a good team this year. <laughs> not a good team. Coming in three and six, one and five in the Big Ten. Uh, yeah, they've been on a six game losing streak, Jared. Kyle, 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 Kyle. <laughs> the team's bad. They're on a massive losing streak. Before this turns into a rerun of last week, before this turns into a rerun of, rerun of last week's Know Your uh -oh. Enemy episode, uh -oh. weather talk. The weather, and again, this is Wednesday night, and the weather changes. About 39 degrees. Wind about 14 miles an hour, uh, little to no, uh, right now it says 0% chance of rain. Again, it's, we're recording this on Wednesday night. Things change. I, before people get concerned, before people get concerned, I, I don't feel like this is going to be a repeat of last week. Whether men are never wrong. False. False. Weathermen are never wrong, and I'm 100% on my sloop picks this week or this year. Um, please <laughs> uh, listen to the sloop picks on Friday because no one does. Um, the <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared. Um, tell us about this Indiana team. What what do we make of this Indiana team? As I mentioned, losing six in a row here. And um, yeah. Not, not good. Yeah, you know, they started off with a win over Illinois, which in retrospect, like at the time, at the time, we oh, Indiana beat Illinois. Well, whatever. Uh, I think we actually mostly even expected it. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like, OK, like we probably didn't even Kyle. I don't remember. I don't remember anything we record. I'll forget that I'm saying this nope. right now nope. in 24 hours. Did we even talk about Indiana, Illinois? Probably not. Probably at, not. Like on our on, on our uh, collegiate chaos episode. Probably not. Jared. I feel really good saying no. <laughs> yeah. Then they beat Idaho. Mm -hmm. Then they beat Western Kentucky. Uh, now, time. yeah, we probably should have. So they started off three and oh, we should have been a little hesitant when, you know, you beat Western Kentucky in overtime by three points. Then they got they got boat raced by Cincinnati. Yep. Uh, they lost to Nebraska. And this was. Uh, this was back when Nebraska was like extra bad. Yes, they were. Uh, they lost to Michigan 31 to 10, which in retrospect is kind of a kind of an L for Michigan. 
Yeah, I think that was. I want to say Nomad that that was. I want to say that was Nomad. Nomad. I want to say that was Frost last game in Nebraska. Is that correct? Could that be right? I don't remember. Remember all that. Hold on. Remember that Michigan game? It was 10 10 at halftime. It was. It's a real. It's a real Michigan L. He didn't coach against Nebraska. That was his first game there. No, he didn't coach against. Do you, do you mean Indiana? Indiana. Do you mean Indiana? I'm sure you meant Indiana. I'm sure he meant Either Indiana. Way. Um. No, I meant what I said. Okay. Um. <laughs> But the way it is worded is confusing. Fair enough. Uh, All right. So close so game, to- closest close game against Maryland. A close game against Rutgers. All losses, but, but, mind but that you. Maryland game. I believe that Maryland game was their first one without Baby Tua. Was it? I don't remember when he got he hurt. Might have been. I'd, I'd have to look, but pretty sure that was minus minus Baby Tua. Uh, no, nope. He he did play in that game. That was the game that he left. He got hurt in. How early? He left in the fourth quarter there. Okay. Um. Then they got they got they got trounced by Penn State in their last game, and now now here we are. Yeah. Uh, Indiana scoring about twenty three point three points per game and letting up thirty two point two points per game, not even averaging eighty yards a game on on the ground and letting up almost 160. Now now there 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 was there was talks um Wednesday here, Jared, that there was a team meeting with the offensive line and with CJ Stroud to come together and build and really recognize, hey, yeah, we we have an issue with the run game, guys. We got to get our shit together. Was this a players only meeting? I think it was. It's never a good sign. Somebody, the the, the players only meeting is never a good sign. Uh, CJ said, Oh, I'm sorry. CJ said Paris Johnson and Dwan Jones held the offensive line accountable for the issues in the run game. Uh, Stroud also said he and Whipler have led discussions about improving that part of the offense. It's kind of rich that Paris and Dwan would be the ones leading that conversation considering um, they weren't the problem. (laughs) Um, yeah, there, there is a serious, let's, let's, I mean, just to shift the focus to Ohio state real quick. Some people were calling me an apologist for the Northwestern game, uh, for the, uh, Scarlet and mm-hmm. grade Northwestern mm-hmm. game. Um, you know, you can't be blind to the fact that there's problems on the team. I'm not the, the running game, the run blocking has gone downhill. I never said otherwise. I never said the team's perfect. I never said that there aren't problems developing. Never said those things. Just said that the wind affected the passing game, and when the effect in the passing game gets affected, of course the other team's going to load the box if you can't throw the ball more than five yards down the field. It's basic yeah, but, football. Yeah. It's basic football shit. But still, but still, I'm not going to get into that. You can listen to last. Listen to Monday's episode more more on that though. Now, All right. if we're going to talk about rushing, what can we expect this game? Kyle, do you have uh, rushing statistics or defensive rushing statistics for Indiana? Uh, yeah, not good. <laughs> that I mentioned before they had they're letting no, up about. It's not bad. They're letting up. They're letting about 157 yards on the ground. That's not good, Jared. Right. That's not all that good. Right. But per rush, they're giving up 3.7, which is pretty decent. Here's the thing you have to realize about Indiana. Is that they tend to lose a lot of games pretty early, uh, which is like other teams just start running on them. Just Mm -hmm. they go into clock killing mode against Indiana. But if you look at the per rush average, yeah, Kyle's absolutely right. Um, opponents rushing yards per game, they're 84th, 84th in the country from a run defense standpoint, which, again, at first glance, looks really bad. But then 
the number of times an opponent has rushed the ball on them, they're 126th in the country. Mm -hmm. Their average is three is a uh, 34. They're 34th in the country, a 3.7 average. So this is why you can't you can't just look at like uh, whenever oh the number one defense, the number two defense, and they're just looking at like the total number of yards. That's a faulty way of looking at things. Other circumstances come into play. Indiana's rush defense is, I'm not going to say it's great, but to sit here and say they're the 84th best rushing defense in the country, that is false. I know that's what the stat says. A little deeper analysis will tell you otherwise. That being said, this is not like me preloading an excuse. Ohio State should be able to run against this team. Ohio State in September and the early part of October could run against this team. The Ohio State that we've seen the past three weeks, we'll see. We'll see. Because they've not been getting it done on from a run-blocking standpoint. And we can... There are good reasons, potentially, why that is. The weather. Iowa's defense just actually being tremendously great. Penn State? Uh, I, mm, I don't know about that. that. That I think that was just a bad performance, if we're being honest. Yeah, so Ohio State, 2.2 yards per carry against Iowa. 3.8 against Penn State. And actually, 5.9 against Northwestern. But that was that's due to a couple of break runs, though. Yeah, I I would be curious. I don't know. I don't know if you like. I wonder what it was in the third quarter at the end, like the end of the third quarter. You know what I'm saying? Like they started breaking runs in the fourth quarter against um last week against Northwestern. I'm wondering what the numbers would have been like in the third quarter. But whatever. It's we're talking about Indiana right now, not Ohio State. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the passing numbers, the defensive passing numbers for Indiana, at first glance, passing yards per game, 106th, 106th. Now, but if you look at an opponent's yards per attempt, it's still 90th. It's not, it's still not good. It's better, better than it appears, but still very bad. Still yeah. very bad. Um, opponent completion percentage, they're at 109th. Um, I think if you if you look at this and you're like, man, why are teams getting so many plays against Indiana? Well, their offense is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what you're literally legitimately seeing with Indiana, which is like, you know, that why they were in the game for a while against Michigan and why they were in the game for a while against Maryland. You see a defense that's not totally terrible. I mean, it's not, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and try and pretend like they're Iowa. They're not, but it's not a like horrendously bad defense as much as it is a defense that has worn out over time. We're talking about Indiana's offense. Whose, com whose third down conversion percentage is only 34.35%, which puts them 100th in the country. Points per play, they're 113th in the country. Yards per game, 114th in the country. Points per game, 97th in the country. What, what you're yeah. seeing is actually a fairly decent, okay-ish Indiana defense that just gets has been getting worn down all year because the offense can't keep the ball. But Jared, let's is there anything positive? What's positive about I thought I was being Indian. I thought I was I thought I was being positive. <laughs> I just said that their defense isn't as bad as it appears. That's me being positive. I don't know what else you want from me. Yeah, so so their defense led by um Aaron K uh Aaron Casey leads the team with 70 tackles, nine of those for loss, two forced fumbles. And I'm curious to see um there's been some chat 
Uh, not sure if um, their other linebacker, who I think is a real stud here, uh, Cam Jones. I think Cam Jones, um, if he plays, could be a big difference maker for this Indiana defense. He's only played in the uh, the first five games, has been out with a foot injury. But in those first five games, he's averaged almost 11 tackles per game. So definitely a difference maker if he can play. Um, there's rumors that he might have been able to play last week, did not. Maybe this week, we'll, we'll see. Nothing, nothing concrete yet. Yeah, um, uh, it's Indian. I don't know. I don't know what you, the, the, the spread opened at like 38 and a half, jumped pretty quickly to 41 and a half. Um, this is, this should be a blowout. I think if you're, if you're looking at Ohio state, they've had three games that at least from an offensive perspective, didn't go exactly the way they wanted it to. Uh, because you, we saw this team during the first half of the year just burying teams in the first quarter. Absolutely burying teams in the first half, at least. And then the past three weeks, Ohio State hasn't done that. And the rushing game is a serious issue for Ohio State over the past three weeks. So, what we have to ask ourselves is... What will we see from Ohio State this weekend against Indiana? Um, and I think you're going to see a team that's out to prove that they still have it. I think this is a bad week to be Indiana. I think Ohio State's going to walk into the horseshoe and basically have nice by Ohio standard, Ohio November standards weather. Uh, yeah, it'll be breezy and a little bit chilly. Eh, that's, that's fine. We can deal with that. Uh, as long as it's dry and the wind stays under 30, things should be fine. And I think you're going to see this team come out and try and prove something. And I think that they're going to in 40, like we're not, we're not getting to the point where we're talking about the spread yet, but 41 is a huge number. That's a huge number against the big 10 opponent. I don't care that if is. it's terrible. Indiana, that's a big number. I'm going to I'm going to pick Ohio State to pick the spread because I haven't not yet this year and I'm a clown. So I'm going to do it again. But if you're act, like, I wouldn't I wouldn't put your house on the line. <laughs> That's a big number. But I think what we you will see absolutely this week is an Ohio State team that could cover the spread if they were if they wanted to. Like you're going to see Ohio State have this game buried at halftime, I think. I, because as much as I tried to talk up their defense, like the nicest, the absolute nicest thing I could say about them is that they, from a rushing standpoint, are 34th in the league at, you know, yards per attempt. That was, mm -hmm. that was, that was, that was the, actually, I take that back. That's not the nicest thing I can say about their defense. That's the nicest thing I can say about their team. Yeah, I'm looking here. So the over under for this game is 58 points, but the but Ohio State is a 41 and a half point favorite. So what's the? So I, I don't feel I don't feel like doing math with a camera on me because that never goes well. What what's the implied? What's the implied score there? Oh God, I gotta. I got to do some math here. Uh, give me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just give me just, a moment. No, just, 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 just keep going. It's not important. Um, the, so again, Kyle, if we, if we look at the defense, there's some good players here. I'm not going to say there isn't. Um, they, they have a decent core of linebackers. Um, they have, not bad defensive backs. I think Williams is a decent defensive back. I think Mullen's a decent defensive back. Uh, they have a guy named Casey and a guy named Jones, which for people our age, I like <laughs> to hear Casey Jones. A uh, pair of linebackers who are uh, getting a lot of tackles for the team. Um, I yeah, That's like a 49-9 to nine game, something like that. 49-9, to nine, is that the implied score? Uh, maybe 
No, actually, fifty to eight. I think fifty to eight, which we all know, like so it's like forty nine to nine, though. If you make it like logical football numbers, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't right, know. Let's let's, it, go, let's 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 go talk, ahead and go into our, into our picks real quick, then, Jared. Do we talk about their offensive playmakers at all? Um. Yeah. Play, play. <laughs> Hold on. Excuse me. This is this is for the YouTube people. Playmakers. So I really don't think they really have a, a playmaker here. Um, they're running running attacks, not getting it done just because they're having to pass it all the time. And their right. quarterback, uh, Connor, is, is not all that great. He's, was it, like 56% completion, 12 touchdowns, nine interceptions for the year. Not Not all that, not all that great, so... He's also been sacked yeah, yeah. 23 times. Oof. Yeah. By the way, I, I did. I found a statistic better. And this is if you if you, if you can't tell by my tone of voice, this is going to be sarcastic. Uh, better, better than the 34th run defense. Um, they are number three in the country in number of passes per game. Usually that doesn't bode well, Jared. No, that 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 means you're behind and needing to throw. That's what that means. That's yes. what that means. Um, which is again why you see the disparity in their rushing defense statistics. Right? They're just behind a lot, and they're throwing a lot, and they're getting run on a lot. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Who who would you say is their best wide receiver, Kyle? Um, probably Cam Camper. Uh, yeah. Leads the team in receptions, 46, 569 yards. Nice for the uh, for the year so far. Yeah, and, and they like to throw to their running back Henderson a decent amount too. And I've there have been some there have been some uh, times this year with Ohio State where a a run or a, excuse me a pass to a running back has hurt them. So that might be a thing to keep an eye on. Um, but yeah, this the offense is is not great. They have some decent play, playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. Like I said, some good linebackers, some good defensive backs. They struggle in the defensive line area by a lot. So if you're Ohio State and you're trying to get that run game going, this might be a this might be a good game to do it. But again, like you can't just go by the yardage. Their run defense isn't actually terrible. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's great. I'm saying it's it's okay-ish. It's 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 a pretty okay run defense. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into our picks then, Jared. All so right, we'll let's, let's with, do it. We'll start with Ohio State player to watch. A lot, a lot, a lot of players here, Jared. Yeah. Which one are you going to go with? Tossing this out there. Um, one, it, it, when was the last time Ohio State had both their running backs healthy in a game? I think last week we were concerned that Mayan Williams might not play, but then Henderson did play. Or, but we were expecting Henderson would play, but then it was the opposite. Um, so I'm just going to say Henderson. I, I Ohio State can go out. And by the way, I'm going to say Henderson slash Mayan Williams, whoever, whoever, can I just say the starting running back? Can I get that? Because we never know which running back's actually going to play. One of them is always like surprise hurt. Tossing mm -hmm. that out there. Um, but I'm just, give me the starting running back. We want to see Ohio State establish a run. Ohio State can go out and they can throw the ball all over the yard against Indiana if they want to. And a lot of people want that. That's what a lot of people want to see. They just want to see Ohio State blow this team out as quickly as possible. And I get that. Ryan Day wants to reestablish the running game. And you might say that that's stubborn or that's pigheaded or that what whatever. Like you might get frustrated at that. But you do need to fix the running game and you need to fix the running game in game. You need to fix the running game in game. So you can call that if you want to, you know, pig headed or stubborn or whatever that he's going to, you know, force the run game, whether it works or not. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I'm going to go with the defensive player in this one, Jared. I know that 
we expect Ohio State to put up tons of points in this game, but I'm going to go with the defensive player to to watch for Ohio State, and I will go with a person who's been on a roll these past few games, JT Tui Molau. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. CJ on uh, Zach says CJ on the ground is his player of the game. He also says Steel Chambers. (laughs) I would love to see uh, Jack Sawyer finally break through. I would love to see that. I think I saw somebody in our in our Discord um, mention that earlier. But um, yeah, I think I think for me it's JT until somebody else uh, somebody else new comes up. That's fair. All right. Uh, enemy player to watch, Jared. I, I, I am. I struggle with this one. I, <laughs> I don't know which, which player for Indiana to watch out. So I, I guess, I guess I'll go with their, their main linebacker, Aaron Casey, um, making plays, stopping, stopping the run here. So I'll, I'll go with Aaron Casey. Their punter, hopefully, Spike says. That's funny. Kyle, do you know who the leading sack oh. maker on the team is? I thought I thought you're going. I thought you're going to say who's Kyle? Who's who's the name of their punter? <laughs> thought that's who you're going to ask me. Uh, that would be uh, Deshaun McCullough. Kyle, do you does that name sound familiar to you? Um, maybe. Maybe yeah. a little bit. Yeah, if, when, you, uh, if you if you listen to us the, during the, the off season, the shirt. <laughs> if you listen to us during the off season and you listen to our recruiting stuff, uh, then you know that he was committed to Ohio State for a long time. Yes, Austin, a poor guy indeed. He flips to Indiana, which is a weird thing. You don't you don't expect that to happen. But his his dad was coaching there. His brother was playing there. Um, so he made a family choice, which is, I respect that and, uh, went and played for Indiana. Mm -hmm. However, he now finds himself as the only McCullough on the team as his brother graduated and his dad moved on to other pastures. Um, so now he's just there by himself, um, doing well, leads the team in sacks, um, has, a good number. Uh, he has three pass deflections, um, 21 solo tackles, <laughs> a farm upstate. No, just a different coaching job. Not, not that type of pasture. He different pasture, not out the pasture Two two separate phrases. Um, if he wants to transfer to Ohio state, I'll forgive him a hundred percent. In fact, like, Ohio State has Austin does a thing you and I were talking about in the Discord earlier today. I think Ohio State's gonna have some linebacker depth issues. Please, McCullough, come back. <laughs> <laughs> you can transfer in the conference now. It's not a big deal anymore. No, in fact, he, in fact, he's probably not even old enough to remember when it was a big deal because that's not been a thing for a while. Um, so yeah, come come right. back, McCullough. Key matchup of the game here. I really want to see Ohio State being able to, I guess, I guess assert their dominance, uh, be able to run on the ground, run it with um, effectively here. So I'm going to go with the Ohio State offensive line versus the Indiana linebackers, especially if Cam Jones is playing here. That's going to be a, a big plus for Indiana to stop Ohio State's running attack. I'm going to go with a very similar but more specific issue. The interior offensive line, and I think this is, I think now several weeks in a row that I have done this, the interior Mm -hmm. offensive line against, I'll say the Indiana defensive tackles. I'm going to keep saying it until Ohio state figures it out. All right. All right. And the spread here, Jared, Ohio state, when we, when, uh, when CBS locked it in 41 and a half point favorite for Ohio state. Yes, sir. Oh, boy. So it's a lot of points. So the beginning of the year, Jared, I it's a lot of points. I, I didn't I didn't go with Ohio State to cover because I just I didn't trust them to be able to cover. Uh-huh. And then I came around and then I came around like, all right, yeah, 
uh, Ohio State's going to be able to cover cover these spreads here. And uh, recently, that hasn't been the case here. And uh, kind of kind of like what you were saying with your key matchup. I'm going to pick you until I'm going to pick you until um until it's no longer an issue. I'm going to kind of go the same way here. I, I have Ohio State winning, but not covering in this game. I have Ohio State 45 to Indiana 14. You want to you wanna check this out? Ohio State, um, th- this is, I'm going to start with week one and just keep going. Ohio State doesn't cover, doesn't cover, cover, cover. Doesn't cover, 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 doesn't cover, doesn't cover. For what it's worth. Now, those aren't necessarily our numbers, though, because the numbers can swing a point or two different depending upon where you are. So that might not be 100% based off of the numbers that we were using. Um, But yeah, Ohio State, at least according to the source I'm looking at that I just looked up now, um, four, four and one. So one push. Uh, against the spread this year for what it's worth that being said indiana's three and six against the spread so there you go both teams currently on a two spread losing streak does any of that mean that yeah someone's gotta break that someone's gonna break that someone's gonna break that uh losing streak um, 41 points is a lot, but I'm a, I'm a clown and I'm a homer. So screw it. I'm going to pick Ohio state to win and cover. He's doing math. <laughs> I am. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Was I supposed to do the score? Yes. Am I doing the score now? Yes, you are. Um, uh, crap. Now, comes uh, the math. now, now, now comes the math. Uh, <laughs> I will do. I will do 59 to 10. All right. 59 All right. To 10. No mad uh, in our guess- matchup is the punter versus the punt returner. Uh, Spikes says 52 to 17, which That's is like halfway in between, that. which is like halfway in between hours. All right. And our guest picker, Jared, this week, one of the OGs of our Sloop Cats, Sun Card. Yes, yes. What does he have Sun to say? Card, Sun card picking. Yep, that's that's my uh, final score there. Wait, was it? What did I say? I said, I said forty five fourteen. So we had we had we have the same um, uh, total points, Austin. Gee, right, how did? Card, the, oh, yeah. No, all right, no, Sun he does. He has forty nine to ten. Yeah, I had forty five fourteen. Fair enough. Oh, all right. You Sun did, card says, you are not nice. No, gentlemen. First, thank you for putting out quality content each week and building an awesome server and community. Thank you. Uh, I would encourage all listeners to join the Discord and the Patreon. Did I say it correctly, Jared? Because you were reading it. Okay. Uh, For this game, the Buckeyes respond big this week. Time to run the ball and dominate. Uh, I was hoping he would clarify this. He said Buckeyes cover and win 49 to 10, but that's not a cover. Oops. Well, I so. think it it opened. Well, you got to go with the score then. Uh, I think the game, he may have not. And a half. Yeah, it opened at 38 and a half. Um. But we just got to go with the score, and Suncard therefore doesn't pick Ohio State to cover, um, according to Suncard. Sorry, Suncard, we we changed your pick because of that's 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 how math works, and you're a traitor <laughs> to your fandom. Those are the rules. Sorry. All right. So that is our picks here, Jared, and can't end the episode without uh, answering some over unders from Austin. Austers, uh, Austers. Austin's oh, over unders. Oh, oh, Austin getting just yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Listen, Austin mispronouncing Austin's name's a tradition on this show. He literally changed his Twitter handle because of me. <laughs> All right, Austin's over under here. Um, I don't think he's listening. He he would have responded to that. All right, first off here, Ohio State rushing yards. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> 
Ohio State rushing yards, 189 and a half yards in this game. Ohio State is averaging 193.2 yards per game. And you know what? I'm going to go over. I, th this is a statement that Ohio State needs to make to really just put out there mainly to the game that's happening here in a couple of weeks. Hey, we, we fixed this running game. Watch out. So I'm going to go over. I'm going over in this one. I think Ryan Day wants to run the ball in this game. And I think that they go up pretty big, which means in the latter part of the game, they're going to run the ball a lot just to kill the clock. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go over on this one as well. All right. Uh, sh Shivers yard per carry. Uh, Shivers is their main running back, uh, averaging 2.59 yards per carry carry which if i look up his stats real quick 3.8 what was it 3.8 3.8 man 2.59 is low very that low. Is low i'm gonna go over with this one just it, it just seems really low for me i'm sure there's some stats out there that austin um has here which i'm actually Trying to pull it up right now from the game logs, his past couple of yeah. games here. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask uh, as not well. Not that good. Not yeah. that good. Uh, his last games were negative two yards per carry. Jeez. 0. 0. 0. 0. 8, 2.3. And Michigan against Michigan, it was 3.6. He doesn't break a big run. He doesn't get it. He hasn't Which had a... Sounds like... Sounds like it's an offensive line issue to me, but yeah. He hasn't had a rush of more than 16 yards since the game against Cincinnati. Wow. Uh, eight, yeah. The 3.8 is the team yards per carry. Uh, according to my stats, that's his yards per carry. That's also his, too. Um, 100 and... 106 attempts, 399 yards, 3.8 per carry. Yeah. Um it it is Yeah, okay. I it's I'm a, I'm going to look stupid here for a second. Yeah. Is 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 Idaho FBS? Only a second, Nomad says. They are I've... in the big sky. Austin says they're FCS now. All right. So mm -hmm. worth noting that the stats I look at exclude their previously FBS. Yes. And they, they did relegate themselves. Um, but yeah, so just worth noting that the stats I look at don't include FCS numbers. So just in case mm -hmm. someone's like, your numbers are wrong. That's why. Yep. They're not wrong. They're just different. All right. Differently All right. calculated. Uh, next, All right, next one here. Indiana first downs, total first downs at 13 and a half. I think that's something that Ohio State's been struggling a little bit is letting up quite a few first downs throughout the game here. I just don't think Indiana has the playmaking ability or ha Indiana does not have the players to be able to get that many first downs. So I'm going to go under. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I, I already went over their offensive stats earlier. Um, it's the third down conversion percentage, 100th in the country, fourth down conversion percentage, 123rd wow. in the country. Um, they yeah. average 19 a game. Mm. First downs? I'm still going to go under. I find that very hard to believe. All right, uh, next one here. I'm going, I'm going under as well. All right, CJ Stroud passing yards at 281.5. I'm, I, I just feel like this is a game where they really try to like establish a running game. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't think this game is going to be competitive for 
the entirety of three quarters. Yeah. Um, so gonna... how much are they even going to throw the ball late in the game? I, I want to say it's going to be kind of like the Rutgers game. They ran the ball a lot. I, I know he, he CJ kind of struggled a little bit in that game too, but I think they're going to run the ball a lot and CJ's not going to have the numbers in there uh, to to uh, put those kind of um, numbers up. What did he so throw I'm, for I'm against Rutgers? What did he throw for against Rutgers? What did he throw for against Rutgers? 154 yards. Against Rutgers? He was 13 for 22 for 154 yards, two touchdowns and a pick. Yeah, I. But he's but he had but he's over that 280 yards. In the three games after that against Michigan State, against Iowa and Penn State. Yeah, I'm just I'm. Did you guys see Cade McNamara is out for the season? Interesting. I did not see that. Nope. Missed that. I missed that. Um, I'm, I'm just curious how many times Ohio State, like, really throws the ball. Like, down the field throws the ball against this team versus, like, how much do they just run the ball maybe throw on occasion just to pick up some first downs, but really try to like establish the running game. It's all it's, 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 I'm gonna, I'm actually going to say under here and it just has to do with what Ohio state chooses to do versus like if they wanted to, if Ohio state wanted to throw for 400 in this game, they could. I'm just I'm curious if they're going to choose to. Mm. All right. Uh, Indiana players with a reception at seven and a half. This is one thing that Indiana does, and they they spread the ball out a lot. As you probably saw, Jared, I wrote a lot of wide receiver names there. I know we didn't cover we didn't cover all the names there, but they throw the ball to a lot of players here. So I think I think seven and a half is a is a good number there. That's still a lot. That's still a lot of um. That's still a lot of players to throw it to. So I'm. Yeah, they I'm currently go... have ten players with ten or more receptions. Yeah, I'm going to go under with this. So I'm I'm yeah I'll go under. I think seven or six is what they'll end up with. Can you read the question again? Indiana players with a reception, seven and a half. It's a good. Yes, Austin, it's a good number. Um, I think the number will be seven, exactly. So I'll go under. All right. Ohio State rushing touchdowns at three and a half. Over. Over. All right, moving on. Uh, Eichenberg, Ransom, Steel, Hickman, total tackles. 26 and a half. Eichenberg, I can, Ransom, Ransom Chambers, Hickman. Hickman. Over. Yeah, I'll go over as well. Yeah. That group, that, that, that group, group is 24 and a half tackles. I'll go yeah. over. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I'm starting. Actually, I'm no, starting actually, to. No. Yeah, I'm starting to I'm question it. More. I'm going under because they're going to try to pass the ball more. Yeah, I'm yeah. going under. They're, they're not going to get. I don't think they're going to get a lot of first downs. I don't think they're going to have a ton of plays. Again, Ohio State's going to try to establish a running game, which means Ohio State's time of possession will be up. Um, Indiana's not good at converting on downs, which means their time of possession will be low. And I also don't think this is a game where you see a ton of Ransom and Hickman tackles. I think a lot of the tackles that have been going to those two over the past few games will retransfer down to the defensive line as Indiana does not have a good offensive line. So I think you're going to see the lot more defensive end defensive tackle tackles as opposed mm -hmm. to safety tackles in this game. I'm going to go under. All right. And that is all the questions Austin has for us. That is all of the questions. Are there any other questions in Ask Sloopcast or maybe in the chat right this second? Um, oh, nothing in the mailbag. Nothing in the mailbag for 
related to the Hosty Indiana game. All right. So I guess that's it then. Um, want to, as Suncard mentioned, want to encourage everyone uh, to join our Discord server. Uh, a, a sun card, sun card who I, I was about to say doesn't uh, get paid to say this, and in fact pays us. Um, he says, uh, "Thank you for you know quality content each week," and he encourages all of you to uh, stop by the Patreon, Patreon dot the sloopcast dot com. Um, you can get basically all the access you want premium access to the discord server uh early episodes you get episodes like the, the the monday thursday episodes you you might get a little early but the friday and tuesday episodes you can actually get like pretty decently early um those rss feeds you get a custom rss feed that doesn't have all the annoying ads that come from spreaker if you listen to this uh through the uh podcast version of the show as opposed to the um opposed to the youtube version of the show you can avoid those ads that way um and like i said unlimited access to the discord server including our social screens see you nomad including our social screens um with uh kyle do we know is the is the social screen looking to be another late another late game are we doing that again? I think it is another late game. I am trying to scroll up. I'm scrolling too. You, People yep, can see it me is scrolling. A, yeah. Oh it yeah. The, the, it's running away. It's absolutely, it's a, it's a runaway. We'll be watching the uh, primetime slot again. Um, and that's, I think that's it. That's all the plugs I feel like doing. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? How about some basketball news? I got two basketball news here, Jared. Uh, Ohio State opened up their uh, season with a 91 to 53 victory over Robert Morris. All right. <laughs> uh, they they shot the they shot the ball pretty well in three point land uh, almost 50 percent of the time. But I think the bigger basketball news was on the women's side. Number 14, Ohio State defeated number five, Tennessee. 87 to 75. That's a big, that's a big win for the, um, the women Buckeyes there. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Well, I think I mentioned it in an earlier episode. We'll cover more basketball, probably more in January time. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the basketball, um, in, in the off season or, between bowl games and all that but uh right now it's we're, we're, we're soaking all the football we can absolutely um except for the mac game we're currently not watching because we're we're doing this but um <laughs> aside from that so yeah uh that's it that's the end of the episode tonight's ending music will be brought to you by um the dopamines who are a cincinnati cincinnati maybe dayton i forget uh based band um you can you can check them out if you're listening to the podcast version of the show simply by doing nothing and just just keep listening um if you're watching this on youtube you can click the link in the show notes to listen to the song because we we can't do music on youtube it's just not a thing you can do thank you kyle that's that's a look it up kyle look it up during the music section of the show Cal's like, I know how to spell dopamines. <laughs> all right. So with all that, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the dopamines. <laughs>